Hey guys, this is Mac. Welcome back to episode four of Three Gun Life. Now I am really excited about today's episode because today we're gonna go step by step and in depth on shotgun loading techniques. Now, even when you first start shooting three gun, you'll quickly find out that if your shotgun reloading techniques are not up to par, the rest of the field is quickly gonna leave you behind. I started out just the same way as most people in fact, I'm not too ashamed to admit that when I went to my first three-gun match, I didn't even know what a shotgun shell caddy was. I showed up, in fact, I didn't even have a shotgun at the time. I was borrowing one from a friend. And when somebody said that you had to reload your shotgun, I was like, huh? <laughs> and I really and honestly think that's probably a pretty common theme among beginning three-gun shooters. So hopefully, if you're new to the game, I'll be able to help you understand many of the different shotgun loading techniques. And even if you're a pro, hopefully this will serve as a really good refresher and maybe even show you a pointer or two about how you can progress from beginner to experienced shooter. Now first I just want to kind of talk about my philosophy behind shotgun reloading. When you first start out, it's a very daunting task to be able to reload a shotgun very quickly and under the pressure of a timer. Because the longer you take to reload your shotgun, the further and further you fall behind all the other shooters. So I think there's a tendency, and this is probably a trap for many beginning shooters, to try to reload as fast as possible and to try to practice with timers to get faster and faster. And this is made even worse by many of the videos that you see on YouTube of people reloading eight or 12 shotgun shells in less than like three or four seconds. This is a big trap that I fell into for probably close to a year of trying to reload fast and reload fast. What I found out over time is, at least for me anyways, is that I'm much better if I just simply focus on successfully getting shells into the gun. It doesn't matter what kind of technique I'm using, whether it's weak hand, strong hand, twins, quads, as long as I take my time and focus on just getting every shell into the gun, I am much more successful. And so, in fact, I don't even practice with a timer anymore because what I do is I, I just waste time. All I'm trying to do is hit a certain number on the timer and it's an absolute complete waste of time for me. So. One of the tips that I would strongly encourage as far as the philosophy of practicing reloading is to ditch the timer. Focus on getting the shells in the gun. You will have much more success in using your practice time if you do that. The second point about the philosophy of reloading is that when I started out, I thought that you simply needed to master one technique and then it was good for all situations. I have found out more recently in listening to a lot of other more experienced shooters than I and watching them shoot in competition that you have to be able to master all types of reloading, whether it's single shell at a time weak hand or quad loading strong hand or emergency reloads with an open bolt from a match saver, you gotta practice all of them. Because now when I go to a match, I employ pretty much all of these methods in one single match. I, I might even use different reloading techniques on a single stage because the situation is better for weak hand reloading or the situation with an unloaded start is better for quads. You just have to really look at each individual part of a stage or each stage in a match and figure out what is the best reloading technique for that specific situation. And I believe this is how the sport of three gun is moving. I think that the people who are really masters with a shotgun are gonna be the ones who you see use every technique in one given match not uh, the person who sticks to only weak hand quad loading through an entire match. Now, they're good, believe me, there are a lot of guys on there, especially the ones on the pro circuit who can do all of these techniques better than I can. But for me, and you gotta find what's best for you, which technique is best for each individual scenario. So that's why I'm a big proponent of practicing everything. So let's go back to the beginning and work our way forward through all these methods. Now let's start with weak hand reloading one shell at a time and then transition on to strong hand single shell reloading which is how I started. 
I'm also going to go over some of the equipment that I use as I go through each different type of reloading. Um, now, these are the typical caddies that you used to see a lot uh, when everyone was just weak hand reloading or strong hand reloading one shell at a time. Uh, these are made by California Competition Works and these were all the rage back in the day. Everybody had to have these. Uh, there were also some that would allow you to double stack so you could have eight shells instead of just four. Um, but these were pretty simple, pretty easy to obtain, and uh, not really flashy at all, pretty easy to use. You'll also notice that in these, I have what are called dummy shells. So these are 12 gauge shells that uh, are the same weight and feel just like uh, real shotgun shells, but they don't have primers, so they're pretty safe uh, to practice with. Now with our Benelli M2 shotgun that we use here in competition, uh, I'm just going to demonstrate this load really quick. The thing about weak hand reloading is it takes a lot of practice. The guys who can really do this, like the Taron Butlers and the Millers and the Keith Garcias of the world, they can do it better than some guys who quad load, but it takes a lot of practice. And this is one of the things that sort of turned me off to it. So basically as you're shooting, um, for me anyway, I would usually drop the gun here. The grab is the most important part. Grabbing these shells in a straight line out of the caddy is the most important part and usually resting the brass on your pinky finger just like this is ideal and then you just want to feed these in the shotgun one at a time now most people who are really good at this technique um, will usually tell you that one shell per second is average you know that's a goal that you should set um, I was never comfortable doing it that fast and I wasn't that good at it so once quad loading and twin loading came along, I pretty much abandoned ship on weak hand reloading. But it's a skill that most people started out on and one that you at least need to know how to do. So I just wanted to demonstrate it briefly. Now along those same lines, reloading with your strong hand using a single shell at the time is much the same. However, I found out and I started with this technique because I'm a right-handed person and I always found that it was a little bit easier and I had a little bit better dexterity using my right hand. So I initially picked up on this technique watching Daniel Horner reload. Um, this technique is much the same as the weak hand version except that I'm using my right hand instead. So I'll set my caddy up here, four shells, on my right hand, strong hand side. And then when I'm ready for a reload, I'm going to rock the gun 90 degrees and put the stock right here under my right hand shoulder, grab my shells, and I grab them the same way I grab them weak hand with the brass of the shells resting on my pinky and then feed the shells in with my eyes focused on the loading port. And this is a technique that actually I still do sometimes use. One of the reasons I do like to use this caddy still is I, a lot of times I'll put slugs in it and for mixed stages where I'm shooting uh, both slugs and also bird shot, I'll have these as an emergency reload type of function. If I miss a slug shot or something and need to toss one shell in the gun really quickly, rock the gun, throw in one shell, get back in the fight. Now, moving on to the twins method, I moved on to twins loading not too long after I actually started three gun. Um, I think that twins and quad loading were probably born out of necessity in the three gun world. A long, long time ago, if you go back and listen to some of the guys that started three gun, a lot of shotgun stages would only have eight or nine shots so that your shotgun was loaded up from the start and you essentially would pick it up off the table, shoot your eight or nine shot array, and then dump the shotgun. Loading wasn't really a big part of three gun. As three gun has sort of exploded and match designers and match directors have uh, really got elaborate with a lot of the stage designs, uh, you know, now we even have complete tactical shotgun matches. So shotgun loading has definitely come to the forefront and a lot of these multiple loading techniques like twins and quads have frankly been born out of necessity because a weak hand loading um, really is a lot slower than these methods. So I moved on to twins a couple of years ago by now. So I actually started practicing weak hand twins and practiced that for a while, never actually did it in a match. Uh, then once I made the transition over to strong hand twins loading, this is when I really hit my stride and I pretty much exclusively loaded strong hand twins in matches for about two years. Now briefly I just want to show you my caddy setup on my belt here. 
Um, this is how I currently run my belt in matches. Uh, I have three different types of quad shell caddies here. Uh, these two are made by Invictus Practical. They're 2.8s. I love them. They're my favorite shotgun shell caddies. And then I have this one set up on my strong side here, uh, which is made by TACCOM. I used these probably a couple of years ago, but this actually works really well for me to have two different types of setups on my belt. That way I can weak hand load or strong hand load all within the same stage. So, in order to weak hand twins load, the first important step is that as you're shooting the shotgun, you have to lower the shotgun and flip it upside down with your strong hand. I find that resting it underneath my shoulder here makes me have a very, very sturdy platform for reloading. And then I like to get my loading port here as close to the shells as I can. And anytime you're twins loading or quad loading, the grab is the most important part. So as I reach down and grab two shells, I'm gonna pull them off just like this. And then in one motion, feed them into the shotgun as I sweep my hand forward. Then if I wanted to go back and reload a second set of shells, I would again grab them just like this and sweep them into the gun. And that's pretty simple, weak hand twins loading. You can do this, go back and forth as many times as you want. But the reason why I moved on to quads from this is because every time you transfer two shells back and forth to the gun, it's an added motion that takes more time. When you quad load, you should only have to do the back and forth motion twice for eight shells. So if you can get them in the gun, it is faster. Now strong hand twin loading is much the same. In fact, as far as time goes, it's just about as fast. It's only that the first step, the movement of the gun, is completely different. Now, to review, when you weak hand load, you have to drop the shotgun and turn it upside down. And that in itself takes about a second. When you strong hand load, you have to flip the shotgun onto your right shoulder and also turn the loading port 90 degrees to the right. That could potentially be slightly faster. And as you're doing that, you're also gonna reach down, pull your shells off, and then feed them in the gun. Now, this is how I loaded for approximately the past two years. Um, I felt very comfortable doing it, but again, you are traveling a little bit more distance between the gun and the caddy. So every time you go back and forth to get two more shells, that's more time. This is why there was a really strong push, in my own mind at least, to move toward quad loading. Now moving on to quad loading, my preferred method for reloading the shotgun now is the weak hand quad load. I've practiced this probably more than anything else in the past year, and I found that I'm just as fast loading this way as any other way, and the potential to go much faster is certainly there. The key with quad loading though is doing it very efficiently and getting the shells in the gun. So this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about trying to practice for success and getting shells in the gun, not trying to practice for speed. Because over time, the speed will come. And in fact, many people can't replicate the numbers that they produce in practice in an actual match. So in order to be successful in a match, I like to go at my own speed to get all the shells in the gun. For a weak hand quad load, the first step is exactly the same as twins. You have to quickly drop the gun and flip it over so that your loading port is exposed. Again, the grab is the most important part. Instead of grabbing two shells, now you have to grab four, and I find rocking them out and arching my wrist at almost a 90 degree angle helps me get them aligned the same way every time. Then, I simply move to the loading port, insert the first two shells while the other two are still in my fingertips, then transition my thumb to those shells and put them in the gun. That's four, let's go for eight. And that is the weak hand quad load. This is my best way of loading shells and the way that I usually go to in an open stage unless uh, somewhere else calls for a different kind of load. This will be my first choice, the weak hand quad load. Now again, strong hand quad loading is much the same. The only difference is that your shells are oriented differently in your caddy. 
this time being on my right hand side or my strong side. And my first step, instead of flipping the gun, is to rock it onto my shoulder, just like this. Again, grabbing the shells is very important. So I want to make sure I rip them out and arch my wrist at a 90 degree angle, just like this. Feed the first set into the gun and then the second set. Again, rip them out, feed the first set, and then the second set. I'm not quite as good with strong hand for quads, so I've relatively abandoned that method. If I need to quad load on a stage, I'm pretty much going to do it weak hand every time. But it is an important technique to know and the, actually the preferred method for many, many shooters. So that's the strong hand quad load. Now I want to briefly touch on a couple of other loading techniques that incorporate these methods. There are certain situations in matches or either by stage design where you have to load your shotgun in an unconventional manner. Uh, namely, when the bolts open, all of the other stuff goes out the window. Because depending on what kind of shotgun you have, if the bolt comes open, if you run dry, or either if the stage designer makes you start with an open or an empty shotgun, you can't just flip it up, you can't just flip it over and load it because now it's open and your lifter's locked. So the quickest and easiest way to eliminate this problem is by the use of the match saver. Pretty much everybody runs a match saver now or some variation of it. It's a way to quickly get one shell back in your gun. And since I'm loading the chamber on this one, you'll notice that I'm using a dummy round. Let's say that I run it dry then I should have practiced enough that my first instinct is to use my match saver. And you should be able to do that in much, much less than a second, hopefully not losing that much time on your run. Now, if you do need to then load more shells, you can just go back to your standard loading technique of quads or twins. But getting the bolt closed is the most important step in this process. And a lot of times the easiest way is by use of the match saver. Now there are other techniques for loading much more than that. Let's say that you have to start a stage with an, an open bolt and nothing in the magazine tube, completely empty gun. Or let's say that you're in the middle of a stage and you accidentally run it dry and you've got eight more targets left and that one match saver is just not going to cut it. So the quickest and easiest thing to do for me, who is a person who weak hands, is to drop the shotgun, close the bolt, load eight, and then here's the tricky step. I have to hit my shell release lever and charge it all in the same motion. That is my preferred method for loading multiple shells on an empty bolt. Now there are also variations of this exact loading technique that you can do stronghand, and in fact you see these all over the internet all the time. Since that's not something that I really do a lot, um, I really would be wasting my time here trying to demonstrate it to you. But you get pretty much the picture of how important it is to be able to incorporate all of these loading styles into any type of situation because you never know what can happen in the middle of a stage. Finally, one last technique or trick that I like to use sometimes is something called a quick two. I picked up this tip from Mark Passamanic from Carbon Arms. And there are sometimes in a stage where you only need two shells, or maybe you're moving across the stage, you're not shooting, so you're moving anyway and you need some time to maybe load a couple of shells in and you don't want to go through a complete quad. And since I like to load twins with my strong hand, a lot of times what I'll do is just rock the gun 90 degrees here, throw two shells in the gun, and then get back into my stage plan. That's called a quick two and it works really, really well when, let's say, you're only gonna need one more shot or maybe at maximum two and you just wanna get an extra two in the gun really quickly. The final point that I wanna to discuss today for you is that even with mastery of all of these loading techniques, unless you have your shotgun set up to easily accept twins or quad loading, this is gonna be very, very difficult. So my Benelli M2, I have customized quite a bit to make both twin loading and quad loading much, much easier. The first part of that involves having an extended lifter 
or one that has been welded in, pretty much all shotguns from the factory come with a forked lifter. And in theory, this is supposed to help reloading. But in fact, for people who shoot three gun, what it does, it ends up catching the end of your thumb, slowing down your reloads, and also causing you a lot of pain from your thumb. People used to call this Benelli thumb because I can tell you from experience, the factory Benelli lifter is a terror on your thumb. So I'm actually using the Terran Tactical Innovations extended or AccuGuide lifter. It works great and I would not be able to reload basically at all unless I had this. So first you need to address your lifter. The second thing is you need to open up your loading port. Now I've spent quite a bit of time and effort opening mine up. There are companies that do this. In fact, they, they customize shotguns. However, I didn't want to invest the money in doing it and I actually enjoy doing things like this. So I've opened mine up several times to where I have it set up perfectly just the way I want it to be able to load these shells really quickly. So the second step is you have to address opening up the loading port on your shotgun. And the third thing is magazine tube size. Now this shotgun in this configuration is a little bit of a hybrid. It has a 10 round tube on it. It doesn't exactly fit into factory division and you're shortchanging yourself if you want to run practical. So I also have a 12 round tube that I'll run on this uh, when I'm shooting a magnified scope and I want to shoot a practical division for 3 Gun Nation. I like the way this shotgun is set up and balanced so a lot of times if I'm going to shoot factory I'll leave the tube the same configuration on here but just uh, download it by two rounds by using a short piece of dowel rod. And that makes it legal for factory and also allows me to quad load because it'll accept eight shells and uh, makes it really, really fast for me. So once again, this is Mac. Thanks for joining me for episode four of Three Gun Life. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of new perspective on shotgun loading techniques and takes you through the various different kinds of ways of quickly getting shells back in your shotgun. It's probably one of the areas where people spend most of their time practicing and dry firing or practicing reloading in their garage. It's one of the techniques that's going to help you probably improve your performance in 3-gun more than anything else because on stages where you have to reload your shotgun, you're really, really going to cut a lot of time off your stage time if you can get your shells in there quickly and efficiently. So if you like this video, help me out by dropping a like. And also, if you like this series and videos like this, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe link in the bottom left hand corner. Stay tuned for next episode of 3-Gun Life, where in episode 5 we'll talk about what to expect at your first match, as well as some of the unwritten rules of 3-Gun. Once again, this is Mac. Thanks for joining me. Be safe out there and we'll see you next time.